All right, guys, our strength portion for Friday is deadlifts. The exact same rep scheme as last week, the exact same rep scheme we're doing next week. If you came in last week, the goal here is to add five to 10 pounds on top of each set. All right, it's only four sets. It's gonna start off at eight reps, and then two sets of five, and then the final set is where the money's at. It's going to be as many reps as you can do, okay? So use those first sets to really get yourself dialed in. Uh, the standard setup for this is gonna be feet right under the hips, bar very close to the shins to start. When you reach down, you wanna find that grip just outside shoulder width. So if you have a grip issue, you can switch one grip over, okay? Set yourself up, tight hamstrings. Notice my shins are vertical. Chest is pulled up so I have a nice flat back. Drive up to that top position, squeeze your butt, control on the way down, okay? If you watch from the side, you can see I'm really pushing my butt back, okay? Really keeping tension in, in my posterior chain and my hamstring. What you want to avoid is coming past the knees and then losing that tension and the bar comes away from the body, it's over my toes, okay? So this is really important when you get to those final reps. Um, really focus on keeping the bar close to your body, using your lats, touch, and go. If you have tight hamstrings or you struggle to get to this bottom position without rounding your back, this is not a good position to lift from. So two options that you can do. Number one is to do a sumo stance. So I widen my feet out. My arms are in between my feet. Now this allows me to drop my hips, a little bit more on my quads, but not as stressful on my low back. It's the same type of movement. Stand up, squeeze your butt. Okay, so that's one option. Another option is to get something to put underneath the plates, like a, a lid to a jerk box or some bumper plates that starts the bar higher. So every rep you'll only start from a position that you can maintain a nice flat back. And so you would do reps down, touch, to whatever range of motion you're comfortable with. And the goal over time is to get a full range of motion, but that's a nice, safer position to work from. So that's our strength portion. Let's talk about our conditioning. All right, guys, our Friday EMOM today is gonna to be three movements for five rounds. It'll take 15 minutes. Remember, EMOM means that you only perform one movement within a 60 second window before transitioning to the next. So you can always adjust the reps here, but the goal is to finish the reps in that minute and have time to transition to the next movement. So. Uh, it's designed as 15 reps for each movement. The first one is an American kettlebell swing. So when you set up for this, start tanning tall, nice big chest, load the hips back, big drive overhead. Okay, when you receive that kettlebell, the hips are pushed back and my chest is pulled up. So I'm loading to really drive from the hips, squeeze my butt, flex my quads, creating all that power from the hips. If you have any mobility issues, this is a tight position overhead. So you can shorten the range of motion Okay, to any place that you feel comfortable through the shoulder, or if you're using a heavier kettlebell, you also might reduce the range of motion, uh, challenging yourself with your grip and your hips a little bit more. So that's the way you can move into some heavier weights, just by reducing the range of motion. But 15 reps. From there, we're gonna go to the wall ball. So wall ball, it's basically like a front squat position, right? Find your squat stance, start with the squat, big drive to your target, nice, smooth, one rep into the next, okay? So really focus on keeping your eyes and chest up on the target the whole time. When you receive the ball down, you don't wanna let the chest drop and your hips come high, okay? So keep the eyes up the whole time, good deep squat, all right? Ideally, we're gonna squat every single rep, um, but you can alter the height of your target or the weight of the ball if you need. We've done a lot of squatting the last two days, so feel free to sub into maybe a wall ball push press if you needed because we've done a lot of squatting, so basically it's just take the squat out. That is also a scale you can do if you have sore legs, okay? Uh, last movement will be a suitcase dumbbell step up. A single dumbbell, suitcase means just holding it at your side, so you're gonna stand up with the dumbbell at your side for 15 step ups, okay? So you can switch hands, switch feet as needed for 15 reps, but work on good core stability, stand up all the way every rep, that's it. Adjust as needed as you go through the EMOM, guys. Have fun with it. See you tomorrow. All right, guys, we got two stretches for our finisher cool down today, uh, both for two minutes long. And I love talking about this first one, the pike stretch. It's such a classic stretch. Uh, and I give you some tools for how to work on it. So a lot of people we see sitting there just like, oh, I'm not flexible. And then they hang out here and they're able to talk. This should be hard work. Now here's, a, here's a, oh, how you can approach it. Okay, so 
One, I'd say the first goal is to be able to touch your toes because it's nice when you have something to hold on to. So let's say you can't reach your toes because you're too tight. Bend the knees a little bit so you can grab your toes. Now, work and try to lock the knee. If you're really tight, that's going to feel hard, right? It's not going to feel very good, right? But take a big deep breath, straighten the knee, good. Then go to the other one. And then try to do both at the same time. And just hold it there for a second, as long as you can, you can bear it. And then release the tension, and then try to work your chest forward a little bit. And kind of work through that process. Flex one leg at a time, flex both legs, try to breathe through it, all right? Take a big deep breath, loosen the tension a little bit, and then work down. And just try to play. So you're not just staying perfectly still the whole time. You're trying to use some flexing some contracting and relaxing and working yourself down. Another great tool here in coordination with that is having a partner push on your back. If you have that, that's really helpful for trying to get that improved range of motion. So the goal is not just to feel a stretch, but to see an improvement in the range of motion as you go. So two minutes there, work hard. This should not be comfortable. From there, we're gonna go to two minutes each side of the figure four against the wall. So for this one, you're gonna scoot up against the wall, okay, lay on your back, and then cross over, and then push. So the closer your hips get to the wall, the more you're gonna feel this here. Okay, I can push here, get a nice stretch through my glute. Okay, if I get closer to the wall, that's gonna make it a little bit deeper. Stretch, trying to drop my hips to the ground. Okay, so two minutes on each side there. That's our finisher for today, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.